They don't even keep down Charrington. You're giving me orders. I outrank you a full grade, Custer. Your rank doesn't mean a thing while you're in my custody. So you follow my orders or you won't live to see your court martial. Leave that pistol alone, May. I'm in command here. People are dying out there. There's nothing we can do for them. They're dead already. We'll be dead too if you fire that pistol. There's someone alive in the coach. Whoever you are in that stagecoach, stay down and keep quiet. Sounds like a gambler was traveling with us. He's dead. And get under that stagecoach and play dead now. Start riding west. Lieutenant, we'll ride double in this morning. Hurry. had been the youngest general in the Civil War. Within five years, he had been reduced in rank and sent west to be forgotten. But he was not the kind of man to let the world forget. His name, George Armstrong Custer. Sign of it? No. Good. We've lost them. Between that, Colonel, you don't know Indians very well. I know savages just as well as you do, Custer. Blue Creek, I fought more than 400 Cheyenne. And yeah, we've all heard about your Indian exploits. 250 of them were women and children. That's a lie. And the rest of them were weaponless, since they were camped under the flag of truce and turned the weapons in at Fort Lyons. I intend to prove that that's a lie. Well, you're going to have to, Colonel. 
Because that's why you're under arrest and headed for a court-martial. You're beginning to sound like a blasted Indian lover, Custer. I say we've lost the Indians. Let's get out of here and make tracks for Fort Hayes. As far as we go by horse. You can dismount, Colonel. You too, Lieutenant. Are you out of your mind? You mean to put us a foot in this country? That's correct. Now get down. You intend to walk to Fort Hayes? It's the only chance we have. Now dismount, Colonel. I'm sorry, Colonel Custer. I may be under arrest, but that's one order I don't intend to follow. Colonel, did you see that Indian on that paint pony? Well, that Indian's name is War Cloud. Now, if you're under the delusion that you can outsmart and outrun War Cloud, will you just point that pony south towards Fort Hayes? Now, it's only 50 miles, but I can almost guarantee you you'll have a fire roasting under your belly before sundown. Have you a better plan? I have. We can take the long way around. Walk right into their hands. It's the thing they'll least expect us to do. Yeah. Fool, we could have used that horse for cover when we made our stand. What would we use to make our stand with, Colonel? Lieutenant LeMay's revolver and that bow and arrow? If we were in such a hurry, we could have picked up our sidearms in that luggage booth. And given up our scalps in the process. No, thank you. I don't understand. What are you doing? Those ponies are headed in the direction of Fort Hayes. I'm hoping that War Cloud will think we are for a while. Until he picks them up, at least. That'll buy us some time. Now, let's get lost up in those bushes. You can get out of those boots and into the moccasins we took. Well, if they're good enough to follow our boot marks, they're good enough to follow moccasin prints. Well, that's true. But this is Indian territory. And I'm hoping they won't be able to tell our tracks from theirs. Now pick up that lance and let's move. To Pones, to San Kawika. They ride south to White Man's Fort. The yellow hair is full. There are many Lakota Sioux asleep forever, if that's so brave bone. We waste time. Listen to me. Yellowhair wears a white skin, but he has the heart of a Sioux, and he thinks like a Sioux. So we shall hunt him like a Sioux, not a white eye, or others will die. You do not think he has gone south. I think he's gone to the Black Hills. He would not dare. You will follow these tracks into the Black Hills, Brave Bull. We will go south after the ponies. Kessler, I'm getting tired of this little game. Not exactly a game, Colonel. War Cloud's the hunter and we're the prey. I'm tired or no, we have nothing to say about it. Colonel Custer, I don't see how we can hope to hit anything with that boulder. Look down there. That's Buffalo Gap, the only way into the Black Hills fraction. It's a fine defensive position. I assume your strategy is to make our fight here. If you'd stop thinking like a soldier for a minute, Colonel, and start thinking like an Oglala Sioux, you'd realize that our strategy is to make a fight nowhere. Well, there can't be more than a few of them. We have LeMay's pistol. We may need the bullets for ourselves. I don't think you'll relish what they'll do to you if they take you alive. Yes, sir. Colonel Custer, if you left an empty trail for War Cloud back on the plains, what are we doing here? Get up, quick. Get up, fast. What is it? The answer to your question. He's suspicious. Wait a minute, that's where, that's where Colonel Custer dropped one of the boots. Swallowed the bait. 
How'd you know he'd come? Well, Claude's a hard man to fool. But he had to follow the horses, and he had to make sure it wasn't a trick. So we sent a man here. Now, even War Cloud wouldn't have figured you'd be insane enough to enter the Black Hills. Wrong, Colonel. That's exactly what he'd do himself. You didn't save my life. But you probably put us all in the arrows run. Mini Kanju, Sanzark, Brule, Sitting Bulls, Humpapa, Oglala, they infest those hills. Now well, let's get out of here. Pony got away, sir. No matter. We need at least two horses. The country's too rough to ride triple. The rawhide Rietta will come in useful. From now on, Colonel, do your killing quietly. Canteen, sir. Army issues. A little bent up. Still hold water, though. Second Cavalry. Why, they're stationed back in Julesburg. The other one was taken from one of General Terry's men out of Fort Hayes. It'll give you some idea about War Cloud, Colonel. He's like a fire sweeping the plains. All the way from Julesburg to North Platte, from the Republican River to Fort Hayes. He's a brilliant tactician, and he commands one of the finest light cavalries in the world. So don't take him so lightly from here on. Let's move. Doing, Charrington. There's a twenty dollar bounty on every hostile scalp brought in. Put that knife away. Why should I? That brave was as good a soldier as you or I, and he died fighting for a cause he believed in. You're as romantic a fool as I've been told, Custer. this land to reach a fort. We shall make camp here and wait for him. But we shall not let him hide. You two shall follow Yellow Hair and howl at his heels like the wolves on the edge of the buffalo herd. Go! East. Thank God there's two less braves to worry about. You're wrong, Colonel. What do you mean, sir? War Cloud is as good a tracker as any human being alive. War Cloud? What makes you think he's a human being? We come in all sizes, shapes, kindnesses, and cruelties, Colonel. And until the white man taught him, War Cloud never attacked women and children. What are you talking about, sir? Why don't you tell the lieutenant what happened, Colonel? 
When we get to Fort Hayes, I'm going to demand satisfaction for that, sir. I was in Denver when the Colorado volunteers returned from Blue Creek. They brought back human trophies. You mean American soldiers did that? They could have taught a Comanche. They taught us. We were just giving them back a little bit of their own medicine. You mean you admit it's true? Lieutenant, whenever a war cloud, a gall, or crazy horse does it, sooner or later they're forgiven and offered a reservation. When we do it, some greenhorn sick at the sight of blood wants to court martial us. But they're savages. That might excuse them. But what excuses us, Colonel? Uh, War Cloud sent those two braves to cut us off from behind and flush us out. They'll be down there waiting to set a trap. Because he knows it's the only way we can get back. Well, hadn't we better move out before those two hair lifters come back? We will, just as far as it takes us to set up a good ambush. That looks like a good spot right there off that trail. You're insane. You mean to tangle with those two with War Cloud within gunshot? Well, Cloud expects those two Indians to flush us out on foot when we reach the plains. And I intend for us to be on horseback. And I don't see any way of getting ponies unless we take them from those two Indians who are after us. Now, let's move. He's mad. Mad is impossible. He's, he's mad as... War Cloud? Carrying this, there's no water to be found between here and Fort Hayes. There might be. In any case, you'll keep it. What for? Might make a fine weapon. A weapon? How? David had less to fight Goliath. dead. The horse has got away. You're going to have to help me get this arrow out. The bar 
Barb's in there. I'll have to butcher it out. Any time, Colonel. Any time. It's gonna hurt. It already does. Bleeding much. Good. Rub some wasna in there. Some what? Wasna. It's in that bag. It'll make a good poultice. Let's pack it in the wound. Now, when we reach the plains. We won't have any cover from there to Fort Hayes. Or well, Cloud and his braves will be waiting for us. You know, we gotta come out of here sometime. We've gotta get around them. It's not gonna be easy to do. I'd give anything for a Hotchkiss cannon. Lob a canister of grape shot right in that cutthroat's camp. That's a good idea, Colonel. It's a good dream. We'll have to make us one. I think that wound is going to your head, Custer. We can make a cannon, but we can make a canister of grape shot. Get me that empty canteen you were so anxious to throw away. Check it, make sure it is dry. It's dry as death. Good, gunpowder. Pour it in. That's good. How many bullets we got? We got four. Let me have them. I'll save two. I don't want to be taken alive. Let me have two. I would say this was a sheer waste of effort. Well, you better pray that it works, Colonel. Because your life depends on it. Should have seen the fire arrows by now. Right north, find spotted tails camp. Bring back many warriors. Better throw it, Colonel. I'm still a little unstiff from that wound. I hope this contraption of yours works. So do I, Colonel. So do I.
Not in here, not in weather like this. The rain will wash out our tracks, but luck won't be out of here tomorrow. I wouldn't be overly optimistic about that, Colonel. Incredible the tricks that life plays on the man. You were last graduating from a class of 34 men. I was an honor man. By all the laws of logic, common sense, I should have gained the glory. That may be true, Charrington. Except for one thing. I know what you're going to say. Luck. Custer's luck. Everything you touch turns to glory. Luck. When I sat 36 hours straight in the saddle, you rode a desk in Washington. Custer, I'll have you know that I requested field duty. I'm sure you did. I know how I got field duty. General Winfield Scott. General Winfield Scott had a good appetite. He could eat enough for three men. But the thing he liked best were wild strawberries in season. I made sure that General Scott got his wild strawberries by riding 120 miles in a single day. I cheated. Begged. Yes, I even blackmailed General Scott to transfer me to McClellan's outfit. Luck, maybe. But no one ever gave me anything. You must be joking. A major general at 24. You were the boy general. I received my stars in the field of battle at the recommendation of General Pleasanton. But there were three other men who were also granted that same honor, not just me. Now, Farnsworth and Merritt were only months older than I was. Either of them could have been singled out by the newspapers for the same attention I was given. That's exactly my point, Custer. Luck. Well, I'd say a certain amount of Ability have something to do with it. Well, I'm, I'm sure that's true, but in any case, you rode on to glory ever since, and we were left in your shadow. But I, I'll tell you something. Well, it, it might amuse you. For years, I've sworn to myself that if ever given the chance, I would gain as much glory as you or more. The Blue Creek fight, for instance. You know how that came about? I was thinking of you. Your fine, grand charge at the Washington. You rode in at dawn, and your band was playing the Gary Owen, and you rode right in the front pages of every newspaper in the world. And honestly, I hated you. And I swore to myself that I would do more. Much more. Do more. Much more. You slaughtered an entire Indian village for that? For that? Yes. Exactly for that. For the glory. Only it seems that I don't have your luck. You massacred the Cheyenne and the Washita. I did the same thing at Blue Creek, but they brand me a murderer. <laughs> you are a murderer, Charrington.
I'm coming for a snake. You hear anything? They're coming. Let's go. Where? That gully. We're through, Custer. This is no cover. It's all the cover we're gonna have. Get in. Today we had yellow hair. Rattler for another weapon. So it's they're gone. Let's get out of here while we have a chance. Relax, Jarrington. War Cloud's got eyes like an eagle. If we so much as ruffle that dust out there, they'd spot us. Well, we should get out of here. They're liable to come back. That's for sure. As soon as they fail to turn up any tracks further on. Costa, we should make a run for it. We will. Just as soon as it's dark. I suppose you've picked a direction. I have. Well, is it a secret? Not especially. We'll head for that rocky butte, just west of here. That's miles out of our way. Well, it depends on how you figure it. Seeing that we've been living on borrowed time since War Cloud jumped that stagecoach, I figure we've got nothing to lose. Except our lives. That's right. Sometimes I don't understand you, Custer. You're obviously a man driven by ambition. Guilty, Your Honor. Constantly in hot water for offending your superiors? That may be true, but just the same. You're the one that's up for a court-martial. For doing my duty. For following orders I was given, Custer. What orders, Charrington? 
I've never seen any orders that required us to wipe out the Plains tribes or destroy their culture. Culture? Your talk is the talk of a stupid sentimentalist. These ignorant savages have controlled this land for thousands of years, and what have they achieved? They haven't even learned to grow crops to feed their own bellies. The only thing they know is to chant meaningless noises and paint their faces and kill. What crops have you grown, Charrington? You wear a fancy uniform and spout words that mean nothing. And you kill men. So what makes us any better than these tribes? We represent civilization. Civilization. Obviously, you've chosen the wrong side of this war, Kester. In a way, perhaps you're right. I'm in a party to destroying a people's way of life that I've learned to understand and appreciate. But I've also learned that that's not really what's important. What is important? This will be a big country someday, Charrington. Big enough to hold all kinds of people and all ways of life. And that's what I'm fighting for. You really believe that? Enough to die for it. I'll get some sleep. <laughs> escape us, he will see the fires and approach them. He is not that foolish. Perhaps he hears your words and laughs. He would not come that close. That's what he wants us to think. He will pass us so close our fires will cast his shadows on the ground. And we should be out there, waiting for him. Bent Arm is a brave man. If he hunts the cougar at night. I am not afraid. Only a fool would say that. I will prove it. Your squaw will sing the death song for you. Escape to the butte.
rest here before you start climbing. It'll be daylight soon. We won't stand a chance. We haven't stood one for the last two days, so nothing's changed. That legend of Custer. Boy General. I can understand how that came about. You're a crude, resourceful man, I'll give you that. Kind of things a dying novelist exploit so well, and it just comes naturally to you. I'd say some nice things about you too, Colonel. If I could think of any. No. No, it's true. Oh, you have a knack for the heroics. He kept us alive longer than I believe possible. And if, if we get out of this situation, I'm sure there'll be a dozen sensational stories about your frontier prowess. Oh, at least that many. Another spectacular exploit. Make all the newspapers in the country. And you'll be a bigger hero than you've ever been. Have it your way. Hush. Keep climbing. Come with me. It's time for us to part company, Colonel. Why? Give one of us a chance to stay alive a little longer. Keep moving. Follow this cleft as far as it goes. When you reach the far side of the butte, you should be able to find a way down. If you make it all the way, wait till dark, and then make your move to Fort Hayes. Once you're across the river, you should be safe. What are you gonna do? I'll try to draw them away from you. Now move out. And let you make another noble gesture, Custer. Not on your life. Suit yourself.
You're not winning this time, Custer. I am. Taking a lesson from your book. You're not going to be the hero. I am. What's happened to us will make a sensational story. Charrington. Man. Soldier. Beat War Cloud at his own game. Charges against me will be dropped when the public learns to idolize me the way they have you. Last night while you were asleep. There's no glory in what happened for either of us. There's little honor in running from the stupid savages, as you call them. So let's move out. You've got a court martial waiting for you. <laughs> 